Theresa May plans to reach out to opposition parties after she suffered that now infamous largest commons defeat in British political history on her Brexit deal. Regardless of success, reaching across the aisle is a good way to start uniting our bitterly divided country. Remainers like me doggedly reject the idea uh, that we can get a deal with the EU that will be better than the one we already have as members. And we warn against no-deal chaos. Leavers, on the other hand, argue tough. We won. And that we should have some faith in boisterous Britain's ability to bounce back after Brexit. As soon as it got free from its bottle, the Brexit genie has divided spouses, families, close friends and political parties. We have all occasionally been guilty of being unable to empathise with opposing perspectives and giving in to lazy tribal identities rather than doing the emotional heavy lifting needed to pull this country through the crisis. Delaying Article 50, a people's vote, no deal or a renegotiated deal. Whatever happens next, let it be a decision that is made collectively by Parliament or even a national unity government. This division has to stop. You know, I agree. Never has there been an issue that has divided this country so much in it. Young against old, young yeah. blame the old. Um, <clears throat> it's a classic. I think politics as a result of this will become more class-based and bitter because we've mm. had the working classes against the so-called yeah. liberal elite and the intelligentsia. And th never mind Scotland and, and England, 62% of which in Scotland voted to remain. And there has been rage and shock and disgust, but I think... I think in one thing, and all the polls show this, that society is fundamentally agreed, and that is <laughs> Remainers and Leavers alike want to just get on with mm. Brexit. Mm. They yeah. want to do it. Every poll says they want to just get on and finish mm. it. Mm. I don't think we're going to have a problem trading with Brussels after this is all over, not least because, no matter which way it goes, not least because Germany's about to go into recession, Italy already is, France mm. is in chaos. I think they're going to need our trade and our business more than ever. I'm not worried about what happens to us. But, but I just think the biggest divide now is between politicians and the people that they represent. I think this is going to be a huge problem. And I think whatever happens next, and whatever, wherever we go, I think all the, all the rebels, the people who have, who have led this rebellion in Parliament and, and the people say against them, I think they have to be got rid of. And I think they will be anyway in their constituents. The, their part, their, their, the constituency parties are already threatening it. Because they cannot operate in a post-Brexit government when they don't agree with the concept of it. So I think one of the ways we can heal the wounds is to get rid of, if, if, you know, whatever happens and wherever we're going, and if we do leave the European, you can't have people who are fundamentally opposed to it. After Brexit? After Brexit. That sounds a bit to me like a purge. It's uh, not, what well, I would argue, well, what I would counter purge. suggest. Maybe, maybe it is a purge, but <laughs> how can you have someone who is so opposed to Brexit, like a dominant group, yeah, yeah. implementing I tell you What's how. Going to make it I tell work? you how because the, Mande the Nelson Mandela model of reconciliation it, it, after times of national crisis Please, you can't can compare work, him to does what work, we've has got. worked. I know, I know. No. But what I'm saying is a better way. I think you know. For example, I suggested a national unity government. If we do Brexit, if we do, a better way would be for the hard Brexiters who would then be in power. You know, the, whoever becomes Prime Minister, to bring those others back into the tent and work with them. I think that could help heal the country. But what, what Majid is trying to find is, is what the <clears throat> tone should be, and actually yeah. a national unity government is yeah. not a bad idea. Carol, you, you want to resolve it by purging everybody who disagrees. I, 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 I think, don't think I, that's I, the way... I think you have to get rid of people who are fundamentally get, oppose Just the it. language, get rid. You, we've got to include everybody, I would argue, but, not but get rid. Do you, do you not think that... It's never, it doesn't matter what I think. Do you not think that the, the attitude in Parliament now is totally uncompromising? I don't... I, both, I can't... Well, Sides, yes. I can't see any... So it's gone beyond just Parliament. It's the whole of society. But this isn't only a UK issue. I mean, it is no, on Brexit, not. but if you go into country after country, in Europe, you go into America, you've got exactly the same. There's an interesting quote from a guy uh, called Professor Tim Bale at Queen Mary <laughs> University who says, <laughs> for Britain, political stability is a quaint relic. Voters are becoming more volatile over time more consumerist, much more willing to switch depending on the offer. Voters are no longer so easy to please, and we shouldn't see this as an aberration. This is the new normal. <laughs> and, I think, and I think that's probably right, and you're seeing... Yeah. That's why it's... We, we're doing it over Brexit, but you're seeing it right in all sorts of European countries, you're, and in America, over Trump. I mean, Trump is, is a result of this, not a... Not, well, for not us, this weekend matter. will be the tenth weekend of Les Gilets Jaunes. Yeah, they'll yeah, be out again. We, we, yeah. did, we did kind of kick not, it all off with Brexit. But that's fairly... <laughs> even, I think what's going on, and I find it fascinating, because I don't believe this yeah. is just a Brexit thing, I yeah. think Brexit is highlighting it. Yeah. 
I think there's um, a sentiment, and it's gone on for a very long time, that people's views, if you have a certain viewpoint, that view is discarded yeah. and is censored because yeah. it's not seen to be politically correct. Yeah. And I think that this is where a lot of this stuff stems from. Brexit is a symptom of it, but I think that it started way beyond that. And like you mentioned the yellow vests and stuff in France, there will be people that say that that, is, that, that protest, ongoing, a significant protest, is not accurately represented um, amongst the media in the way that it should be. You will Do you have, mean in France? Or... Well, just broader than that. So yeah. pro people, people in this country will sit there and say, well, hang on a second, why isn't the French stuff been accurately reported to the extent of which it should be that reflects the gravitas and the length of the protest. I would say, for example, I highlighted um, a couple of days ago um, a, a Leave campaign that had been just shut down on social media. There is a lot of censorship of a view that is not deemed to be politically yeah. correct. But, but and to me, it is that which is causing the it, situation that we Although it will be today. out again this weekend, it has declined and there's so much going on in the world. The media can only... If you've got the whole of France coming to a standstill on the weekend, that's the story. But if you've got... I don't want to be rude, but you've got one France. car burning in Paris. Yeah, but hang on a minute, because it's not just about France. I think maybe I clearly haven't made oh, my sorry, point I'm properly. Mindful. What I'm talking about is if people have a certain viewpoint that yeah. is not deemed to be along the lines of the mainstream yeah. media's politically correct bias, it gets sensitive. Well, it's I know built, you're scrunching your up, no, it's been, yeah, well, I, I, say, I will I, say I, stuff I, like, I will yeah, say well, grooming. Well, you do a show as well. Well, do you so, so I think, I think the, historically that's been the case. I mean, no, I think, I think what, it still is. Like, if well, no, I talk about on, the so things like grooming gangs, so I think, for example. Well, yeah, so I think, I think that oh, now... He did sensational work on grooming. This guy won an award. I think now what's part of the problem is that actually I think we're all... We've gone beyond that to a point where now just we've lost trust in each other. But it, it, definitely, what you're saying in the '90s built up to this point. Mm. So that when you remember Gordon Brown was caught in a hot mic talking about a bigoted woman, yes. just because Gillian you asked him on Duffy immigration, it it's yeah. not bigoted. It's Burnley. not bigoted to speak about immigration. So I think we we got to that point under the Tony Blair government and Gordon Brown governments. But now it's gone past that to a point where. Trust has broken down. Have a look at this. Tulip Sadiq, um, she had to um, she had to come into Parliament and delay her cesarean uh, section, uh, and she explains the decision here. She says, "Thank you all for the supportive messages. My decision to de delay my baby's birth is not one I take lightly. Let me be clear. I have no faith." in the pairing system. In July, the government stole the vote of a new mother. It's my duty to represent Hampson and Kilman, and I will do just that. Now, look, uh, she beat me in an, an election in Hampson and Kilman, so I'm not one to defend her, but she's got a point that trust has broken down. But also, That's do, the point. Do you not think We've stopped trusting I, each other. I think yes, one of the, yeah. the major issues as well is, is trust between politicians and the people. Because who in those Leave constituencies you know, that are run by Nick Bowles and Anna Subri yeah. and Nicky Morden, who will they trust again mm. to do... They asked them to leave, they voted them in on the premise that they were going to deliver Leave, yeah, yeah. and they, and they, they lied to them. I was talking yeah. last night to um, a former cabinet minister in, in the Blair government, yeah. and he said, why would anybody go into politics today? Yeah. Mm. Well, Why would you do it? Power. About the discourse. Well, it's power, but but it is. But if in the end you're not getting the you're not getting the best people to go in because they're all saying yeah. I don't want to take this. What do I want to take? I mean, who? I mean, I was quite critical of Mrs May, but I sympathise with her. Mm. I mean, you look at the job and you'd say, why is she still there? Why didn't you just Is say, it important she's setting I've... a new tone, Greg, with the idea of inviting Mr Corbyn, inviting yeah, some business? Yeah, but, but the truth is, she, she should have done that, that. Just, she she done done that 18 time. months ago, shouldn't yeah. she? Right. That's what, yeah. The truth is, she didn't do it when she didn't win the, a big majority. It's also worth saying that Corbyn refused to attend. Yeah. And the other leaders of the parties did turn up to meet her at number 10. Corbyn <laughs> didn't turn up. He didn't turn up because Gove eviscerated him 10 minutes But why is people's concern about the discourse now heightened when actually when you look at the discourse and how it's been for many 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 years it's been te it's terrible now but it's been terrible for a while people like Nigel Farage okay. have required security mm. for years on it end is, and no it one is heated cared. on all sides right. but yes. we are taking a brexit break you're watching the pledge on sky news coming up i'll be saying let men be men <laughs>